Hello students, this is Mr. Hames, and this is a brief video that Mr. Mills and I created and will introduce you to the metric system. Before we dive into some important information about the metric system, we would like you to watch this video that I put together. Although it is a little silly, please pay attention to the problem that faces these two characters and identify the one thing that actually helps them both out. How was your ride into work this morning? How far did you have to drive today? Ilete bon, madame soda. My ride has to be in passe. Gina EUA park cover five kilometers o short we. Oh, W O W. My French needs some work. But good thing I know how far five kilometers is. How is Mrs. Double Cheeseburger? We, mon franchise estate excellent. Madame Double Cheeseburger estate bien fat. Tal fois, el estate on plus grows. Alarisa plus the 10 millimeters o colors de la semaine acule. Mr. Double Cheeseburger, you shouldn't talk about your wife like that. But has she really gained 10 millimeters in the last week? We oui, we, oui. Ella state tout a fetla burger o short we. Oui. The tout fasten, vuves laris is slim madame cop, cambi and the leaders son vu just quo oh, short we. Oui. Well thank you Mr. Double Cheeseburger, I certainly have been working out. Yes, I slimmed down, I am now at a trim one liter of ice cold cola. Anyway, how much do you weigh now Mr. D? Bien dot 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 G su is maintenant a on bond a 0, 0,5 kilograms. W O W. Well hopefully everyone knows how much that weights, because you will soon become the most popular burger in the world. Oh boy, here comes a customer, time to work. By Mr. D. Au revoir madame soda, in time grand jour. While watching this video, Hopefully it became pretty apparent that these two characters spoke different languages. However, they both knew and practiced the metric system. This is beneficial because scientists all over the world that may speak different languages can have the ability to share data with anyone they choose. Although the U.S. does not currently use the metric system, it has considered making a switch to this method of measurement, which would certainly benefit many individuals across the country. By now, this study guide should look familiar to all of you. With help from me and Mr. Melzna, this sheet will help you outline and identify various aspects of the metric system that will help you understand and utilize it more efficiently, provided that you fill it out completely and accurately. This particular picture is focusing on the Section 1 metric overview portion of our metric study guide. It is important that you will follow along with us as we give you some important information about the metric system that will help you understand and use it more efficiently. If you fall behind or don't understand a particular topic during any part of this video, remember that you can pause it to catch up, rewind it to clarify something, and even write down questions for Mr. Milsden and I that will help you understand this concept better. To begin with, Mr. Milsden and I want you to know why the metric system is so important to scientists around the world. As you saw in the video, many people throughout the world use the metric system. It's a universal language and it essentially allows scientists to communicate information. So whether or not someone speaks English or French, using the metric system can allow for them to interpret and to share data with each other. Secondly, it is a base 10 system. Essentially what that means is the changing of units from uh, one measurement to another simply involves the moving of decimals. So instead of having to convert from feet to miles, etc., going from kilometers to meters simply deals with the moving of decimals, which we will cover in a moment. The next, the next aspect of the metric overview are the two critical components to know when measuring objects. The first is the base unit of what you're measuring. Essentially, that is, asking yourself, what are we measuring? You could be measuring length, mass, volume, and there are many others, but these are the three that you will run into the most. The second critical component is the prefix. How large is the object? The smaller the object is, you're going to see particular prefixes. Milli and centi are pretty small. The larger, you will see other prefixes. Kilo was a large one. Another one is hecto. 
And we'll cover more of those in a moment or two, but just be sure that you're familiar with some of these different units and prefixes. Additionally, we have included some reference materials for you to use in order to understand the metric system more efficiently. The first can be found on page 14 of your planner. Next, turn to page 203, 204, or 205 of your textbook, and that will also give you uh, some assistance with the metric system. But most importantly is a gold metric ladder sheet that you now have and we will cover in a moment in this video. So do not lose that and learn how to use it because that will be a very useful tool for the for the metric system. Lastly, we have included a few important tips and points to help you out with the metric system. The first states that if the decimal isn't visible, it always goes to the right of the last number. For an example, what that means is if, if you have the number 50, just like that without a decimal, the decimal is supposed to go right of the last number. So no matter what you do, you could add one million zeros to that if you wanted. It's always 50. If you take that same 50 and you put that decimal to the left of that number, that is no longer 50. You now made that 5.0, which is a completely different value than 50. Lastly, we want you to notice that when moving decimal places, the zeros go in the dips. Again, using 50 as our number, so we have 50, which is, can be also written as 50.0. Now what the dips are is when you move the decimal you have to make these dips and Mr. Mills and I want to see these on your homework assignments so please get used to making these dips. But you take the decimal and say you have to move it four times you moved, you moved it four times you made four dips. First dip, second dip, third dip, fourth dip. And then all you do after that is you fill in the zeros. I already put this zero there right after the decimal and then you fill in the remainder. And that is what it means to put the zeros in the dips. This is the metric ladder that I mentioned earlier. Although this video will only provide a brief discussion about this tool, we will discuss it more in depth in class. The, this ladder is used to help you more easily convert a measurement from one prefix to another. For example, moving from meter to decimeter, or from kilo, kilometer to meter. The important thing to be aware of is whether or not you're moving up or down the ladder. That will dictate which way you move the decimal in your conversion. For a conversion that moves up the ladder, you move the decimal to the left. And for a conversion that moves down the ladder, you move the decimal to the right. Please pay attention to the different prefixes in the ladder, such as kilo, hecto, and deca, and the three that you see in the bottom. Mr. Milsna has even been kind enough to highlight the three that you will see the most. At the bottom of the ladder are four steps that you need to use when showing your work in a conversion. Although I will not go through them at this point, I will show you a quick example that uses these steps. In the example problem below, we are looking to convert 50 millimeters to X amount of meters. So here we already have our equation written. Second step, we want to identify which direction to move the decimal. So, millimeters, we see right here. And meters we see up here. So we have to move one, two, three rungs up the ladder, which means we move the decimal to the left. So showing our work, we have 50 millimeters with our decimal here. We have to move it to the left. Remember to keep those dips, and that's our third dip. That's where our decimal will be, and we always put a zero on that side of the dip, on that side of the decimal after we have it there. The final step is to fill in the extra zeros, what we have. So we took 50 millimeters, and after we move the decimal three to the left, which you can see we came out with 0 0.05. And remember, we always need to label our answers, in this case, meters. This is the back of the metric letter that we just went over in class. Now, although we're not going to go too deeply into all this information, be sure you look at it, especially the different prefixes and the sliding scale method, 
to continue to become more comfortable using this tool. Now that you have watched this brief introductory video, you could complete questions 1 through 4 on the metric practice quiz on Moodle. Thank you.